All right. And I, I got to thank you, Ming, once again for doing that. I, I am so in love with this. Now all I got to let you do is, is put our, our little theme song that uh, Ken Gustafson from the uh, Quarantine Cocktail Hour wrote for us. Add that to it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You can use Firestarter without uh, some sort of... I mean... I'm going to... I'm going to... They, I heard go there, Ralph, you boy. I heard Prodigy loves comic books. And we do a comic book based podcast. Chef uh, of the future. I heard he yeah. was a fan of comic book men. So yeah, we're okay. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. fine. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Prodigy. Yeah, I don't just do know what their names are. Like a <laughs> boy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Actually, I think I clicked the wrong one. <laughs> but oh. still, it works. But um, that, that music is uh, what Dan Panocean would. Uh, that's his fight music. If you were to go into the ring, that would be his his oh. entry music. Trust oh, me, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not entering a ring with Dan Panosian. Thank you. Oh yeah, no, no, no one should. <laughs> He's crazy strong. Well, everybody, welcome tonight. We have uh, my, my my partners in crime, uh, Ming Chen and Mike Zapsik, and we have also a very good friend of ours here, uh, Mr. Jeff Johnson. Who, um, if if anybody's actually been looking, Jeff actually kind of did something very very nice for us, and he actually did a piece of work that will be available on the Shared Universe website pretty soon and also available on uh, oh, actually here at Three Alarm Comics. I'll put that up real quick. That's still just a rough sketch. We're waiting on the inks. As soon as those are done, we're going to have those available. Um, matter of fact, I, th I think we, we need to send some of, once we get the prints made, send some off to Jeff and let Jeff sign some of them as well. Sure. Great. Yeah. Yeah, thank then, you so uh, much. Yeah. That's really, it's really incredible. I mean, listen, we're we're a couple of weaklings with like dad bods over here <laughs> and uh hey, yeah. i will mash you into the ground buddy i know you but, you, but come on do you look like that in real life no no, like, no of course not. yeah still but i mean you look good in the wonder man safari jacket i That's do yeah. reason, i guess i look good as snake eyes maybe you I should... look great as snake eyes yeah thank yeah. you I, so, I'm thinking about getting a padded safari jacket just to like wander around cons like padded with, like, yeah. like, yeah. Padded like like big arms like, and stuff yeah oh, how are you <laughs> I, I'm you know, really glad I, that you uh, that you like that version of his costume. I always get, love getting a chance to draw that one. I know it's it was so panned, and so people are like, "Oh man, that's that's the worst costume ever." I uh, loved it. So did I, and yeah. I I am so kind of like heartbroken that John Burns like I hate this costume. I'm destroying it right yeah. now. Yeah, and, you know when he when Wonder Man fought Nefaria and he just knocked him through. I. I don't even think that that's really how a costume would shred if you're thrown through concrete walls. But hey, <laughs> John Byrne was like, I hate this costume. We're getting rid of it. Uh, and, you know, uh, George was like, well, you don't like my costume, you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I loved, uh, I've loved all the Wonder Man costumes, but it's, I still have a really soft spot in my heart for the safari jacket. I just think yeah. it's, it's, it makes him so, I mean, it's the, one, it's the first one I really saw that I fell in love with as a fan. And I just think it really set him apart from all the other superheroes. Right. Cause it's really weird to have a guy with no sleeves on. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I've, well, I know people in real life who wear in like zero degree weather, just wander around with, you know, shirts with no sleeves on them. And they're not the kind of person that you want on earth's mightiest heroes. It made him interesting. You know, I mean, he was a, a movie star as well as a superhero. And, you know, that gave him his own style, his own, his own flair. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was a kind of a weird like transition from being like uh, a guy who had brains. He was a really smart guy mm -hmm. who was, um, actually wasn't he like second only to Tony Stark. In intelligence, he, was a, he no. and Tony Stark were com yeah were competitors. Yeah, they were competitors at the beginning, and uh, Tony was just like far and away more of a futurist than right, Simon was. Right. So, yeah. and you know, it's, you're like, oh, okay. And then he went and became a um, first an actor, then a stuntman, which I thought yeah. was, I mean, it's pretty cool. I, he took the Dolph Lundgren uh, route to uh, <laughs> to start. Him. He was like, Listen, I can work in chemistry. I have a, a doctorate in chemistry. It's way easier, more efficient to make more money uh, hanging out with um, Sylvester it? Stallone, Sylvester and Stallone, and, and Brigitte Nielsen, Brigitte Nielsen, and act in my own and be an actor. Sure, and and, uh, and he did, yes. and it worked out. He's like, I, I got, 
I got doctorate in chemistry to fall back on, okay. I guess. So it's not yeah, a bad fallback plan. If this stuff doesn't work out, I can always go back to the Avengers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, it's fun. So how so you guys are the new spaces all open up now? Uh we are, yeah. If you've been following our saga here, oh. the uh the building that our podcast studios are in, um uh first it got hit by uh, high winds from a, a hurricane that rolled up the East Coast. And we lost power. And we lost power. And I thought it was, you know, I was here when we lost power. I was like, all right, I'll come back on in an, in an hour. It didn't come back in an hour. So, and then the next day, um, Mike, uh, Mike gets, uh, someone sends an alert. It's one of those like kind of community alerts that said fire detected on the corner of Main and Broad Street in Eatontown, New Jersey. And I'm like, corner of Main and Broad Street? Hey, <laughs> I live on the corner of Main and Broad <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was like, wait a minute, that's our building? Like, no, yeah. it couldn't be. Nah, it could, it's not nah. our building. No, not why, why building. is there a fire? There's not even power there. So I'm like, oh, crap. So I, I pulled a bat turn, and I, I came over here. and Mike went to investigate. Uh, and sure enough, our building caught on fire. It was There were a couple of small fires in electrical panels, but they still soaked everything. So I think oh, no. like, I don't even see any. No, not not the interior. Yeah. Thank OK. God. The building, the itself, building. But I, yeah, but I, th I think I predicted it, though. I think I told you, man, I said, give it about a week. You'll be back open again. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, that's a good prediction. But not, hey, I predicted that you were going to catch on fire. Man. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> no my, my, mine was for professional experience. I mean, I, I know too many. I mean, for, for what I do for a living, I was like, so give it a week. Y'all be back up again. Y'all have power. You know, depending on what happens, it's probably up to the electrician and how long he's going to take to rewire everything. Right. Yeah, you were right. But um, uh, yeah, trans uh, They. I guess they tried to cycle the power in the building at right. some point. Uh, it overloaded the transformer and set uh, set an electrical panel Pop. ablaze. Jeez, Louise. And um, so we had Torchy here. Torchy was Torchy here. was Torchy made Torchy was around. But Yo, uh, hey, he 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 does his thing. <laughs> yeah, luckily it seemed like where because I didn't see any smoke. I didn't see any fire damage in here. No, there's and there's no smoke damage. Uh, the the building kind of stank of um, just burnt that wiring, burnt and, plastic. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I was like, oh, if that seeps into most of my stuff, that's gonna suck. No, yeah, but it didn't. Yeah, so we were without power for uh, eight days. We were yeah. we were not allowed to come in here, um, and it. And it was awful. And I, I, I didn't tell you this today. I'm, you know, I'm about to, I'm set up for a podcast this morning and I hear a knock at the door. I open it. Uh, the fire marshal's here. Oh crap. And he's doing an inspection. I'm like, Oh, Oh, Hey, first, every time I see him, cause he's always after us there, I guess we have to pay an annual fee uh -huh. or something. I'm like, Oh crap. Do we owe you money again? He's like, no, 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 not this time, but you will. Yeah. It's coming. <laughs> Number one. But no, I'm just, around to do a general inspection. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look, Hey, look at all, look at all these extension cords. <laughs> Yeah, he, he didn't look displeased with us, but he's looking around. And I see he's looking pretty annoyed, and I'm like, "Well, I'm uh, hey, uh, let me know if you need me to move anything." But you know, I'm sure you you know we had a fire here last week. He's like, "Yeah, that was." Uh, I'm gonna have to start tightening the screws around here with the the people who run your building. <laughs> he did not look happy. Well, not well, because us. So. No, 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 we were fine. You know, he looked around, didn't say anything to me, and that well, he did before he left. He was like, "Hey." When I send you that bill, like if you could pay it right away, so I don't have to chase after you. Yeah. Like, what is that? I can't remember the inspection bill or something, or I don't know. It's forty bucks. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, hold on. But you, you actually have to pay an inspection bill. Is, is that it, or I don't? We have yeah, to it's. Pay it's I don't know if that's a real thing. I'm no, not it's, sure. It's, Are you sure you have a real fire inspector coming in? No, yeah. they, they were gonna shut us down. They're like, eh. Scott, he's wearing the polo shirt. Yeah, so. and and he's oh. like, yeah, it's a it's a legal shakedown. Was, but sorry, right. He was right, holding. So so when I come up, I'm wearing a polo shirt. I'm asking for a couple grand. Of he course. Had, he, was, man. he was holding this thing. It looked like a billy club. I guess he uses it to move things without touching uh -huh. them. Like, I don't know what that thing was. but, uh, but It I, could hurt. But I, I, real quick, while we're on the subject of this, uh, we have a podcaster in here who is a firefighter. Okay. And, um, uh, our, our building Me? people saw him leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they, they thought he was like here to bust them. Oh my! And he's God. like, oh no, but uh, you know those guys on the on the third floor uh, when we were up there. He's like, man, their their door's a little crooked. Maybe you should look go look at that because I told him to go down there just to, <laughs> to, awesome. to light a they would literally light a fire under their asses. Yeah, so, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Fred Moore, for uh, for for doing that. <laughs> so I I don't know this this building, man. It's uh, we've gone it's through cursed. floods, we've gone through blackouts, hurricanes, fires, locusts, fires. And you're still going. 
Yeah, we're still going. Oh I mean, that's God, a good yeah. testament to us, but geez, man. Uh, apparently, Dee Dee, uh, I don't know if Dee Dee is part of her. She, she says the <laughs> elevator is still smells like smoke. She was, here, she was here today. She rode up on the elevator. Our friend Dee Dee. From- <laughs> oh, nice. Um, she got to ride up on the elevator, well, but yeah. I had to lug a box, an 800 pound box up five flights of stairs. And I'm old. So. Are you cursing our new sponsor, Fanboy Collectible? Because you, you probably. No, not them. That. No, I'm not cursing them. I'm cursing the damn elevator people. Stupid Otis. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Otis elevators. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have two elevators. They, they kind of work when they want to. Sometimes. Now we're down to one elevator that sort of is, I guess, doesn't want to work for Mike. Done like me. It worked. Um, Worked for me. I th- no, I took the stairs up, but yeah. but uh, yeah. Anyways, but do you even want to ride those elevators? No. Imagine you got stuck in there. You're not getting out. I'm I'm dying. Because I looked up. Right. There's no there's no Bruce Willis hatch in our elevator. No. <laughs> right. Oh no! What? I'm, no, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get away, I'm, I'm gonna get away for this for a second. But I, I have a question to ask. So we, we talked about having you on on the uh, I sell comics thing, Jeff. Yes. Uh, what do you think about having Ming and Mike on the uh, original Drink and Draw Society? Absolutely. I'm you on the spot now. Um, yeah, you guys, that would be fun. Like we've been, we've been really lucky with our guests. We've had um, Bill Sikevich and Neil Adams and Kevin Smith. Um, so it would be great to have you guys want to come on and talk about comics sometime. That'd be awesome. Absolutely, was, love to. Was Neil Adams getting drunk and drunk stuff? Oh, that would be awesome. That would no, be awesome. Neil, Neil doesn't. Neil is pretty adamant about not drinking while drawing. So we were all very respectful and didn't do anything. Um, but but you also, yeah, we, you also have Dave Johnson and Joe Quesada and Dan Panosian and and Jeff and yeah. and I can promise you if you if you have a drink in your hand nobody's going to be upset. No. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we, wanted, we can't draw. So yeah, I wouldn't be like. And another thing about crusty bunkers. Let me uh, tell you another thing, there, Mister Adams. Yeah. Well, you I, know what's funny is like I I know a lot about drawing comics, but um. I actually am woefully ignorant about the last 10 or 15 years of actually what happened in comics. Because I was doing animation and I, I couldn't read comics and do animation at the same time because they were just similar enough storytelling wise that the comic stuff was influencing me. And I was making bad animation decisions, so I had to sort of stop reading. So oh. I've, missed, I've missed a ton in the last 15 years. I have no idea what's going on. I'll tell you right now, I've actually enjoyed a lot of stuff. I mean, I've known Ming for a little while and actually got to know Mike over the past year or so. And uh, quite honestly, you know, uh, the, the relationship I've, I've had with Mike so far has been actually very beneficial because we have actually gone back and forth and, and been able to uh, it, for, forgive me, Ming, if, 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 I, if, I, if I speak beyond my means, but you know, uh, Ming handles a lot of the technical stuff for Kevin Smith, whereas Mike actually works at the shop and and deals with a lot of the comic stuff. And uh, the relationship I have with Mike so far has been very beneficial. Like he called me up and sent me or sent me a message saying, "Hey, you need to call me," and helped me out tremendously with with some stuff that had become hot without me even knowing about it. Yeah. And I, I really think. That I mean, I really think, honestly, uh, if, if more of that happened throughout our, throughout our industry where we, we help each other and we kind of, you know, th- this is a bond or brotherhood in this industry that, that we have to, uh, yes, in a way we are in competition, but we also have to to help each other out. And, and by working together, it's actually helped out tremendously. I absolutely agree with you, Scott. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that bond of stupidity where we got into the retail aspect. Right, right. <laughs> right. And that's a bond that can never be broken because we're too stupid to figure out how to do it. Yeah, you so, can't get out. So yeah. you might as well right. the way you're getting. Yeah, exactly. Get out of this, so. so if there's anything I can ever do for Scott, absolutely. For all the stuff you've done for us, you, you're you damn straight. I'm going to help you out. Well, so, uh, and, uh, honestly, I enjoy it. I think that's the way it should be with, with just about any business. You know, yeah, you are in competition. You uh, I mean, to me, I, I'll tell you right now, I mean, I'm friends with the shops up the road. I'm friends with shops two miles from here, 200 miles from here. And I, I, I want to see them succeed as well as me, because as long as they're keeping things going, it actually is going to help everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah, that shop on the west side, though, uh, we don't talk about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A shop in Mobile. Yeah, we don't talk about that. Me as well. Well, no. Well, no if, if, if it's a gaming shop that deal. Uh, all right, I'm gonna pick to say some stupid shit. But uh, right. yeah, if it's, a, if it's a gaming shop that deals with comics on the side, you know, fuck those guys. But yeah. uh, <laughs> if, if, if you're better than we are, yeah. If you're if you're a comic shop, I, I'll do whatever I can to help out. Well, can I ask you guys? It's like a a serious question as um as someone who knows 
absolutely zero about the retail side of comics other than trying to draw the coolest comic I can. What do you guys think, what are your opinions on the digital side of comics? Is, <laughs> has, has, have people left the hard copy comics to read more digital stuff or is there no crossover? Like what's, what's happening with I'm that? Gonna, I'm going to let you two go first, Mike. I really haven't found that, uh, Jeff. I, I find that most people who have the collector mentality that a lot of my reservists have, you know, mm -hmm. I, I need this, I need that. It's, um, they don't, if they're going to, if they're going to um, stop buying comics, they're not going to read at all. Mm -hmm. They're going to go cold turkey because, I mean, the collector mentality, you got to have it and you need that hard copy. Anyone can download, you know, Incredible Hulk 181. Right. But, I mean, try and resell it. <laughs> right. It, I'm the same way. As far as that goes, you know, as far as the collector mentality goes, I mean, I've had friends who in the comic industry, I, I'm not going to name any names. But they, they, 10 years ago, they were telling me, oh, well, comic shops are going to be dead. There's going to be nothing but graphic novels. There are going to be trade paperbacks. And what they're calling the floppies are no longer going to exist. It's just going to be things. And I was like, I keep telling them all the time. I was like, you know, there, I, I really think it's going to be hard to let go of that collector mentality. That, just Mike said, right. you know, that collector mentality is going to be that, that, one, that one thing that's going to draw everybody in. And from what I'm seeing on my end, there are two types of people. There are the people who are collectors who are going to buy the stuff because they love the medium and they're going to, they're, they're wanting to get everything possible that they can, that they love. And this is something that's come back around again. Um, it's actually a, an uptick that hasn't happened in probably since the nineties, but we are starting to get speculators back in the market again, who are doing nothing more than buying stuff that is hot. Um, mm -hmm. There, there's a, there's an app, or actually there's a few apps. One of the big ones out there, and I'm I, I'm not getting paid for by them, so I don't care. Uh, it's called Key Collector, um, but you know it's the equivalent of what Wizard used to be. Wizard Magazine used to be back in the '90s and early 2000s, where if they said it was hot, everybody and their uncle is going to go down and look for it, and all they're looking to do is buy something cheap and sell it for a bigger price, and. I, I, I have the app just as well as anybody else does. Uh, I'm sure Mike does. I've, I've shared it with him. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where we followed as well. So I, I hate to say it, but if anybody's going to make money off of it, it's going to be me. And, you know, if, if I've got the book in, in stock, I can't tell you how many times I've come in and I look at the app about four times a day. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I've pulled a book out of our dollar bins and sold it on eBay for 50 bucks within an hour. That's well, that's great. What do you think? Um, what is it about those books that become hot and collectible? It all has to do with, with what's going on with the movies, what's going on with TV shows, what's going on with the first appearance, if it's, video games, video and games, yeah. video games, um, to like, yeah. First appearances of an obscure character, uh, a character. I mean, there was, a time when you could get the uh, first appearance of John Constantine in, in Swamp Thing mm -hmm. for like five bucks. Right. Yep. Now, it's a hundred dollars. Really? Oh, yeah. Shit. I did, actually, the last one I sold for two hundred bucks. Oh, hey, even better. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> awesome. Scott's a better hustler. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're yeah, or either that or they're bigger suckers down there in Biloxi, and, and <laughs> that's all. Awesome. No, I shot. Actually, I followed that damn. I hate saying it, but I followed that damn app, and it it really is. It's beneficial as a retailer when you come in, but you know, granted, but it also comes. It helps to play when when people are coming in looking for stuff. You you, the the speculators who are trying to make a buck, who are and, and God bless them. You know what? They they've caught me more time. They've caught me just as many times as I have caught them. You know, there's plenty of times where they they see something before I do, and they buy something for a dollar that's worth. Eighty dollars at the time, and I know all they're going to do is go flip it, and that that's fine. I have no problem whatsoever with it. You know, if they beat me to it, more power to them. I have a follow up question that's more personally motivated. What do you guys think about the um, original art market? I know that a lot of guys are going digital, and that they're they're not doing uh, like Ron Garney, who was amazing. Is it's all digital, and so. There's less. There are less Ron Garney pages out there. I know a lot of guys have done that for 
the sake of, I mean, the work is brilliant. I mean, the control is amazing and it's faster. Um, do you think that there's going to be a, a paucity of original pages or people care about that? <laughs> I think people absolutely care about the original pages. Yeah. Scott, I'm going to let you go uh, with this one. Go. I know. Well, you, 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 me, you have a whole museum yeah, worth you, full of original art. Actually, I mean, for me, you, as somebody who are. actually, I personally like, I've, I've been collecting original art since probably the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I personally love because mainly it's cause for, for a few reasons. One, you get a one of a kind piece that is never going to be reproduced whatsoever. I mean, you you have the original, you have the one and only. It's not like there's 5,000 copies or 10,000 copies of it. You have the one and only. And for me, it, it's one of those things you have to have somebody, as long as there's um, somebody around who can appreciate the art form, uh, appreciate the, the time and quality that went into it. And for me, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of weird with it. I'm not one of those people that like picking up big superhero splash pages. Mm. I'm actually the guy who likes picking up the storytelling pages. Um, I want to see the, the, the progress and the work that went into it. And Jeff, you know, as well as I do, and I'm sure you do, you do too, Mike, you know, the, the storytelling pages actually require 10 times more effort than the big splash page. And, and that's what I appreciate. And I really think go, going back and look uh, like for me, one of the biggest things is actually, especially with the original art. Um, one of the things that, that really bothers me more than anything is the fact that the pages that you buy now aren't lettered on the page anymore. Right. Yeah, that's done. No, no. And I, I think that John Workman, we, well, Simonson was one of the guys we had on drink and draw not too long ago. And I believe that John Workman is still lettering on his pages for his Ragnarok thing. So those are classics. I, uh, yeah, I love that with the little like bubble peel peeling oh, yeah. off just a little bit. Yeah, like, and, yeah. and you know yeah. somebody used a glue stick on yeah. that. And you're like, that. oh yeah, badass. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, mean, I can't tell you how many pages I've got where I've actually gone out and had to buy a glue stick and actually put the the board <laughs> bubble back <laughs> into play as, as close as possible as I possibly could. Yeah, uh, I mean, but to I, me, I, that that makes it all more wonderful to to have that thing. Yeah, sure, because it was actually touched by human hands. Right, right. There by yeah. well, well, I don't know, man. I've seen some of these. <laughs> I've seen some of these artists, man. Human hands, I don't know, man. That's yeah, human can be a stretch. Sitting right there. I'm man. not talking about Jeff. I'm talking, <laughs> you know, Jeff, come up here and uh, bring Dan Panosian with you and have him kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. have him <laughs> Um Yeah, I think. But the analogy is uh, like the animation cell market. Like it's not there anymore. It all went digital. Of course, and, yeah. Um, right. You know, so if you own. You know, a Simpsons original cell. That's, oh, say from Three Men in a Comic Book. Say from Three Men in a Comic Book that you may have borrowed from Kevin Smith you might uh, for your office at one point. Oh, that was a great episode. <laughs> Which well, I did at one point. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, you've got to. You know, I, I kind of happen to know somebody that still has a, a ton of original storyboards that I can, I've been trying to talk him out of for a long time. Let's see <laughs> right, there, I have there. to send you those. Yeah. He's got a lot of original storyboards. That's amazing. I have some from uh, I have some from Batman: Brave and the Bold. Um, oh. I have some of those original storyboards. Oh my god! Um, I love that. I I so thought was I was gonna. Series. I so thought I was gonna hate that, Jeff. I really did. I was like, I, I did too. After Justice League Unlimited um, ended, and it right. was it was heartbreaking, and I'm glad that they went that extra season, but yeah. Being a comic book guy, of course, I wanted more. Yeah. So, um, and they told the they told all the story that they could tell from Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. And then Batman: Brave and the Bold came up, and they're like, and voiced by Diedrich Bader. Diedrich and I'm like, Bader. <laughs> I love Diedrich Bader as a comedy, uh, comedic actor, but he's going to be Batman. I'm like, no. And then, and he I, did phenomenal. He yeah. was. Um, he is my second favorite voice of Batman. So yeah, no, I, I would say that uh, I I was I was a background artist on the last season of Justice League Unlimited. Mm -hmm. And it was a fantastic experience. Um but I mean I just love drawing that style, the Brave and the Bold style and the Turner was such a great director and a producer on it. It was just a really great series. Yes, absolutely. And it, it was such a love letter to Batman 66 and the yeah. wackiness of mm -hmm the uh the 60s 
comic books that I never, and honest to God, I never thought would make it in any medium. Right. Well, and I'll tell you right now, Mike, whenever Jeff sends those, those things over, um, I'll give you first shot at whatever whatever we get. Oh, uh, oh, oh you! I drew. Uh, I don't know if you remember oh, this series. Well yeah. Hey, kids, you're not going to college. Daddy's got. <laughs> yeah. I did. Um, your investment. Favorite, an investment. Yeah. Um, my favorite. Uh, the favorite section I did from that series was I got to do the cold open to um, with uh, the question on apocalypse. Oh where, my God! Yeah, he jumps into. Oh, the, yeah, he jumps into the the lava pit, the the hell pit. Yeah, the the. Yep. Oh my God. Yeah, that was fun. That was really good times. All right, uh, all right, Jeff. Jeff, I have some money already for you. Apparently. Excellent. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like yeah. to hear. Hey man, it could oh, be yeah. a long year, man. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, stockpile for the winter, everybody. So what is it you guys <laughs> like about? So Mike, do you do you just. Do you like storyboards in general? What is it about the work you like? Do you like that more than comic book pages? Um, actually, I've never really thought about it. Comic book pages are cool, but there's something about a storyboard because you're you're looking at a like a second in time. With with a comic book, you see the progression, like right. uh, Scott was talking about. You, you get to see how the story is progressing. But a storyboard, you're you're like looking at a sliver of time. Yeah. Like, oh my God, I remember. And you know, you've got the question and he's like he he uh grabbed his trench coat and didn't he like turn it into sort of like a glider well he yeah he died he turns around and um and dives into uh he the dives pocket. into the, the hell pit and i have then the question mark comes spinning up and that's wow. that's the the end of that open yeah that was a lot of fun to draw there's a scene in there where he actually fights calabac um that got cut uh, for time. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll, I'll send, I'll send, I have copies of it. I'll send it to you guys. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> thank you. That's, it, it's just like the, the stuff behind the scenes like that. It looked and <clears throat> there was a lot of love put into that series. Oh, I mean, yeah. Justice League action is a lot of fun, but it's, it's like those. <laughs> and uh, I mean, no disrespect to, uh, Justice League action, but it feels like those little vignettes in the Super Friends, where right. they they team up the two most unlikely heroes, like the Atom and Black Vulcan, or yeah. you know, it's, it just seems like uh, it's it's a little sanitized for kids. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. Yeah. Brave and the Bold had some stuff in there that's you know think clean thoughts, chum. You know, it's like, well, like, I yeah. think one of the big, one of the biggest things too between the the comic book pages versus storyboards too with comic book pages, do you like it for the medium? And you, you like it for what it is, but with, with storyboards, you guys keep talking. All right, but with storyboards, you can actually remember what you were doing at the time <laughs> when, when you actually watched it for the first time. So it actually has more. Uh, quite honestly, for me, a storyboard has more um, personal meaning than an actual original art page would be. Right, because you have nothing to do with that. Even even if you remember where you were when you read that comic book for the first time, it's just a page out of the book. And right, you're right. Gonna, uh, are you going to flip them, Jeff? And you're going you're gonna to make. <laughs> gonna make right. I'm going to step away for a second while y'all look at this. <laughs> oh, you got, got it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, so that, uh, the scene where he's. Hang on, I'm not doing it very well, but yeah. Oh, oh no, that's great. Yeah, and so when you do a, what's so funny? What you do? Hang on, let me turn this this off, this light off. Is that easier to see or not? Yeah, that's um, actually pretty cool. So then, um, one of the things that's great about doing a storyboard—it took me a long time to learn—is that you you draw everything, and um, in a way, you just don't do like this is one of the the panels where he runs up to the control. So you draw the poses out mm -hmm. as it moves through time, and you just don't get a chance to do that in comics much. Right. Uh, unless you're Scott uh, McDaniel and you're you're on Nightwing for God's sakes. Right. 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 He's he's amazing. His his action is ridiculous. Yes. Let me see if I can't find the Calabac scene where he fights Calabac. Yeah, that was um it's like here, let me see if I can I know I have it here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I was like, come on, yeah. that's so cool. Yes, that's that's amazing. <laughs> So I, one of the things I think is really interesting about um, actual the the physical boards is 
we made the transition, uh, I guess about 10 years ago, maybe a little bit less, um, from doing uh, stuff on paper to almost being completely digital at Warner Brothers. So um, when I worked on Young Justice, I did some paper, but then mostly it was digital. It was done in Toon Boom. And everything I did on Transformers was uh, done in the computer. And then um, all the stuff I've done recently, all the, the stuff I did on um, on Harley Quinn, that's all digital. So like everything now is done straight digital. Now you have this antique. No one just no one draws on paper anymore. It's just not it's not fast enough. Well, well I'll, I'll tell you this. I mean, kind of a little side story. And, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm speaking out of turn here, Jeff. But like when uh, when Jeff came down, uh, we got stopped. We got to talking about storyboards and everything. And uh, he's like, well, nobody wants that stuff. He goes, I'm sitting on a ton of it in my closet. There's just a bunch of us <laughs> sitting here. I'm like, who's wanting that stuff? So he, he I was like, brother, you, you have no idea the gold mine you're sitting on. <laughs> right. Well, because it's, stu it's stuff like this. I mean, the drawings are relatively small, but like you can see, you know, oh, the question God. jump down. Yeah, oh, man. Oh, see, to me, that's that's what I love with something like it's that. History. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I like that stuff too. When you like, disconnected before Jeff, uh, Scott was saying that he, you know, you can actually, it's, you remember where you were the first time you saw that particular scene. Oh and yeah. You can, you can yeah. connect to it that way. Where you remember what you were doing, where you were sitting, you know, who was with you as opposed to a comic with well, a comic. It just, it's an individual thing, but with, with cartoons and, and stuff like that, you, 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 it's a shared experience. Right. And that's why I'm so happy with um, with DC for every one of their animation projects that they've done. They have never disappointed me ever. Uh, one of my favorite I, I've been super, super lucky in. Uh, I've worked on a lot of really cool projects, but uh, my time working at the DC uh, direct to DVD stuff, all the Batman videos, Batman and Robin, um, the Batman family, those those were a joy to work on because like everyone I think, and I know this is biased, but I think we made better comic book movies than the live action movies. I think, Absolutely. We were, I think we were I true agree. to the source material. I think that, um, that we were able to ha like, and we did it all for a reasonable budget. Yeah. So I, you, I, yeah. You didn't have to have a summer blockbuster. I mean, I, I would still put Batman under the red hood up against any Marvel movie. Yeah. Right. Because it and it was a personal. I mean, there was there was angst, there was pain, there was. I mean, everything that makes Batman Batman. Yeah. Trying to be better than the last fight, you know. I see, uh, yeah, I've said this for a long time. The uh, as far as where it goes with 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 direct to DVD, um, the the animated movies, whatever. Even if they went to a to a you know theatrical release, DC has it hands down with their with their. You know, cartoon stuff that with their with their animated thing, they are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, yeah. If only they would get their DC Universe live action stuff to the same level as their <laughs> animated stuff. I would go. I would even be. I would settle for half. Right. I mean, because um, and uh -huh. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, yes. That seems uh, jumping you, down into. The, can you pull you up, know, Jeff? Well, hold on, hold on. You you realize you're selling every one of these pieces. I know, I'm, up, right? I think everybody in the comments is like, I want that. Yeah, I want yeah, that. Yeah, sure. I want that. Uh, sure. Scott, can you pull up Jesse McDonald's, the last one? He says, uh, the, let's see. The Under the Red Hood movie is perfection, and he's not wrong. Yeah, was, I, say, I agree. I mean, uh, even Crisis on um, Crisis on Earth 2. That that the one with um, or Crisis on Two Earths, that right. one was with. Um, I mean, you have the the crime syndicate. I would have loved to have for them to have been Earth Three, but so, hey, what are you going to do? Well, um, you know, I have to agree with Jamie here, though. A Killing Joke live action would be a disappointment. I don't think they would do it justice. I really don't, because you look at the cartoon, and you know, I, I hate to say it. I, I mean, they, they they made Batman look like a pedophile, or he's just you know, that's why game, I'm killing joke. Um, yeah. that's when I say they've never just never ever like like all. like take advantage of one of his underlings. No, no, of course not. That was one of these. As great as I wanted it to be, that was one of the few that I just completely was disappointed with. And he would never betray Dick Grayson that way. 
So, right. Well, I think one of the things that I mean, I have no idea this is true. This is just my feeling on it. Is that um, the the live action movies have so much money involved, and they have so many people behind the camera with a say with with an opinion that 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 someone has to listen to. I think the 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 product gets I don't know watered down isn't the right word. Diluted, guess, yeah. No, too that, many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, man. exactly. Too many suits in the kitchen. Yeah. That's right, and it's it's a movie by committee. That's what they've they've yeah. always. But you've got Kevin Feige or however the hell you say his last. Yeah, you're. I think, I think Kevin. Feige. And I, if if he wants to hire me, he's more than welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I like that Zapsy. He got my name right. Um, right. But he's he's the be all end all. He's the one who's like, all right, you guys go out and do your thing. You know, right. the only the only caveat is that Ed Norton doesn't get final cut. And uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, but DC is, it's, it's all Warner brothers suits and they never, they've always lagged behind Marvel constantly. And right. ever since like 1960, since uh fantastic four came out after justice league. And it turned out that theirs was better. You know, maybe marginally better in the beginning, but still better. These were guys with problems, and they they treated it that way. You know, no Martha, no none of that stuff. <laughs> you know, well, I think I think with the, with the cartoons, with the live or with the uh, the uh, the direct to DVD releases of the animation, it offers them a little more leeway to stay true to the content. Whereas when you're you're doing a live action major theatrical release. You've got way too many. That's what we're saying. But they have way too many hands involved in it to stay true to what it actually is supposed to be. Right. Yeah, you had Paul Dini and Bruce Tim, who were the ultimate. They were they were like the Kevin Feige's of yeah. the animation world. So what they said went. But then you've got you know your live action, and it's it's parsed out to uh, how how can we do um, toys for this? Where yeah. where's our <laughs> commercial mcdonald's tie-in to this right. where's this where's that and it's like all right i'm i'm done i'm and you know uh we're it's not going to get any better with the, the snyder cut no 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 i know well, you're, uh, you're winning the mcdonald's toys for that coming out yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. actually they'll probably be white castle toys for white that Speaking of which, I, I have to ask you jeff about this so how do you feel like the whole thing about the, the DC universe thing, which you worked on the Harley Quinn cartoon and, mm -hmm. and young justice, and everything else. So them transferring over to now HBO max, uh, and basically the, the DC universe app has pretty much become obsolete. Oh, has it, um, has it, I know that they're doing a lot of stuff on, um, on HBO max, but I didn't know they weren't, I thought they were still going to premiere stuff and still have all the stuff well, available on. I mean, as far as I know, like even the, the new season, which a, a, sh a live action show, I love the doom patrol, yeah. which I think stays very, very true to Grant Morrison's vision of it. I, I actually enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, great, great show. The, the, the new season has already started on HBO max, but it's not on the DC universe app. Oh, uh, well, I mean, I'm sad that, that 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 more people did not find that app um, because there's a lot of really great stuff on there. But uh, if if it takes them selling the HBO for people to discover that there's really cool source material out there, then I, I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, to me, like one of the best things in the world that that the DC Universe app ever put out, and you can argue with me all day long. I loved the Swamp Thing series. I thought it was it was phenomenal. It was yeah. a great. It was something I looked forward to. Most of the stuff I watch, I usually watch in seasons. I actually, uh, I mean, even some of the mainstream stuff that comes out, I, I just, I, I don't have time to invest in watching week to week. Right. But I will tell you this: Swamp Thing and Teen Titans, I actually watch from week to week. Are you watching Star Girl? Actually, Star Girl is fantastic. It's I gotta really, give it to really, them. really great. It's my. Uh, I, I've been problem. very, very impressed with it, and yeah. I, I mean, I got to give it to Scott, also a mutual friend of Jeff and I's. Uh, you know, Scott did a lot of work for it as well, and right. uh, uh, I got to give it to. I have, I have been very, very. I wasn't sure when I I saw the fact that uh, oh God, what's his name that plays uh, Stripey, um, the actor. Oh, um, uh, uh, Luke Wilson. Yeah, yeah, Luke Wilson. When, when I saw him, and I'm like, there's no freaking way. 
<laughs> I, I have I, honestly. I got I, to brother, I've got a I, problem with. I hate Owen Wilson, but I love <laughs> right. Wilson. But but I got to give it to him. I, I I bought into it. I actually believe him in the in the series. Yeah, agreed. Well, I mean, um, I think that the all the DC shows have gotten really good. Like um, especially that one. The 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 special effects, whatever their budget is, it's it's just it's just right. Like nothing looks cheap and there's not too many effects and they really spend as much time as possible making the characters interesting. Well, I will say this. I mean, for the longest time, I will say the probably one of my favorite shows for the longest time for the DC universe TV shows was the flash. Uh, it, it had the levity to it, but it was still had some good storylines. Um, it, it progressed quickly into a show that most people hate, but I absolutely loved was legends of tomorrow. Ah. I actually thought Legends Tomorrow was freaking brilliant. You got to see characters, second tier, third tier, fourth tier characters that you've always been in love with, but we've never seen in a mainstream show ever. I was and disappointed then, when um, it, when the Constantine series ended, and I'm glad he wound up. I was too. On that show. Yeah, we, that, that, series, that series was brilliant too. Yeah, we went on a. Uh, we were trying to get it saved. We we would like. Thump that drum for ever. I remember. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort, Save Constantine. Sort of worked, right? I mean, yeah, sort of worked. Sort I mean, of worked. you know. Yeah. Well, I, done, well, I think that that one that would actually ended up on the, the wrong network. Same thing. Lucifer. I love that series. Um, quite. I mean, honestly, if you read the books, it's probably the furthest thing from the a book interpretation you'll ever find. Right. But I do love the series for what it is. Sure, and you can you can do that. You can, there are people out there that loved Keanu Reeves as John Constantine. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie, I actually liked the movie. You you liked it because it had Rachel Vice in it. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, some good things in it. <laughs> you can't do. So. You know, you just watch the Mummy, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which I've watched many times. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, but, but I will tell you this because it was too expensive. It was too right? expensive, and it was what's just, up with that? I know it's like, come oh. on, man. And that's that's where the bean counter. And again, this is it. It comes to like corporate dollars and cents, where it's like, oh, you're killing me. Like Young Justice, um, The Outsiders, which Jeff, thank you for that. That was the reason I got uh, the DC online. Uh, app for myself really? made for you absolutely uh, only because I, I i loved young justice and i wanted it back and that's another one that we thumped i'm i'm two for two uh right. i can't get comic book men back no <laughs> no i can't get our own show back <laughs> we want these other shows back. i did so weird I, I mean i was i would tell people all the time young justice needs a third yep. season young justice was a crazy it was well, young justice is one of those shows that um I'm much more a fan. Like, I would, I will happily watch a third, fourth, fifth season, but I don't ever want to work on that show again. That show is so hard. It's I such have, a hard. It's so I hard. have no doubt with yeah. 14 quadrillion characters in there. So might as well be working on X Men the Animated Series. Oh, oh, man. It's such a great show, though. Such a great working experience. But, man, I did not see my wife for over a year uh, while working on that show. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that. Yeah. Um, but your hard work came through, though. Yeah, but so, yeah, thank it's, you. It's all on screen. Yeah. It's really, I mean, that show is It's one of my, I've been, like I said, I've been lucky to work on some really great projects. And, and Young Justice was uh, a, a, an honor. I mean, that show is fantastic. Well, yeah. you were actually a you were actually involved with one of my other favorite shows. You were involved with uh, Boondocks as well. Oh yeah. Oh, and the Boondocks. Love that's brilliant. Yeah, <laughs> I was the um, I was the I was the, the not the main character designer. That was Lashawn Thomas. He was the lead character designer on that show. But for the second season, I basically drew all the characters except for the main four or five guys. So um, all the background characters, all the ancillary characters. That was that was my gig. Second oh. season of Boondocks. That was that was a wild ride. Yeah, actually, I, I screwed up when we had Jeff and Scott down here. Uh, I, I screwed up. I mean, I'm sitting there looking at all the comic book work and everything else, and I'm like, then after Jeff and him go home, we're, why should we sit here and talk? Jeff goes home, and like, holy fuck, he's he's worked on this. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, <laughs> dude, holy crap, I have really misre misrepresented this. <laughs> yeah, well, that was one of the that's the one of the great things about being a comic book artist is the training. 
really prepares you for almost any other art field. Like, because as a comic book artist, you have to learn how to draw, obviously storytelling. You have to be good at figures, but then you have to be good at portraits and expression and then backgrounds and vehicles and design and production. And, and basically everything you do in comics, you only have to do one of those jobs in animation. So I, so I got to be just a character guy on Boondocks. I got to be just a background guy on, on Justice League Unlimited. And I got to just be a story guy, guy on Transformers. It's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, do, actually, before I forget to the uh, Jeff, do me a favor. Send me a. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a favor in. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know you. I, I want to see the the one that you ink yourself. But if you have copies of the pencils, uh, send me a decent copy of it um, of the the piece of Megan Mike, and okay. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get John Dell to to ink it as well. We're gonna compare the two. Oh God! Don't do that. <laughs> That's not. Wow. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Not, is that one of your better ideas? Is uh, uh, how far are you down in that growler? Yeah, all right. You know, uh, hey, keep, 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 keep drinking. Uh, keep drinking. <laughs> Scott, keep drinking. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna lie. I mean, yeah, but Jeff, Jeff will attest it. I mean, John's probably one of the. He's great. Probably top. Probably one of the top five inkers in the entire industry. Yeah, it'd be uh, like having me fight Mike Tyson. I'm gonna get my ass kicked. <laughs> oh no, no! I, I want to see your version of it too. That we'll, what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna have John ink it. And then we'll we'll have uh, Mike and Ming's fans vote on which one they want as a as a print and a t shirt. Yeah. And then we'll but then then we'll then we'll sell both versions of it so they can sell right. both both parts of it. <laughs> I get, whatever whatever works. If those guys, I mean, we know yeah, who's going to win. I like your thinking, Scott. Yeah, Scott, keep, but, keep drinking, buddy. Keep drinking. Hey, can but, you do but, another and, and we'll uh, send it to John Byrne Inc. And then I'll send oh, one to George Perez. <laughs> It'll be great. But, what what we'll do is is if, if we if we do it we'll we'll charge like a a, a dollar fee per vote like donate a dollar per vote and all that money he go to you and John. I mean yeah okay I mean it's there you go. <laughs> yeah. up a nine hundred number. Yeah. <laughs> Which version of Mike and Ming do you kill? Oh God, right? Hey guys, I have to go. No, I think um, I have Jonathan Glapian's number on here too. Right, I'll have him do go. a version right. too. <laughs> Well, Jeff, thank you for stopping by. I know you probably stayed longer than you were planning to. But, oh, no, it's uh, good. Um, I'll send you guys a PDF of all the storyboards. Oh, man. Oh, Jeff, oh, oh dude. dude. Not, <laughs> and, I, and, and, and a bonus. And thank you so much for – it's always a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. And, uh, uh, I, I, any guys you want to – anytime you want to have um, – come on to uh, Drink and Draw, we'll, 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 we'll figure it out. That'd be great. Cool, guys. All right, Jeff. Thank you for coming by, bud. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff thank right, you so Jeff. much. Take it easy, guys. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon. Jeff Johnson, everybody. Jeff Johnson. Yeah, I, I can't cool. help it. You know, it, it's nice to have good friends. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> of which you have many, my friend. So oh, of which I, I have. I, I have you too, so I'm good. Well, that's true. Yes. But still. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, you have an army full of good friends. Yeah, you have, you have friends who actually can draw shit for you. So that's yeah, right. Yeah. Or draw uh, you. That's I'll be honest with you. Yeah. When I approached him with doing the 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 thing for you two, uh, um, he was like super happy to do it. It was something that's he's cool. like, man, this is gonna be awesome. This will be incredible. And it, it's taken a little bit longer than I thought, but I really think it's because he actually cares about doing the piece. Right, right. He's oh, to make sure it, no it does. Yeah. He's want to make sure y'all two are happy as well as me. Um. I, I I think we are. So I mean, we're just sitting here trying to trying not to get sick and die. So yeah, it's a, yeah. So <laughs> so far, so far so just, good. Just just promise me if there's a t-shirt made of it, I get one. Oh God, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Nice yes. I, I know your size already, so yes. I'm sorry, you're in the Bible Belt. Um, shit, yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, actually, we're we're a little bit south of the Bible Belt. We're more like the Bible Crotch. Uh, well, that's probably the best place. To it is. Guy. It is a little smelly down there, but uh, right. a little smelly and moist down there. Yeah, but it's right. a great place to be. <laughs> I'm not sure where to go from there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that one there, Scott. Well, um, oh, and obviously, well, I've been I've been missing out. I've been having so much fun talking. I've missed out on a lot of the comments. Andy Childress, uh, the Andy Childress, puppy puppet Andy. Yes. Yep, uh, and actually, so this is one of the fun things that, quite honestly, this one thing, every time I think about the, uh, the right. Safari right. jacket, I, I always think of Jim Soranko. Yeah. Right. Him, he wearing was wearing that freaking oh, yeah. Safari oh, my God. jacket. 
I can't, oh man, because I was like, well, who 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 could pull that off? Like in this day and age, in twenty twenty, yeah, like Jim Stranko Jim can Stranko. pull it off. Well, that's because nobody's a, nobody's stupid enough to to say anything to him. He's right. got he's got uh, God, silver right. dollars that are like ground down to sharp points, and he will stab you. With he them. will, yes. Actually, I, the one thing I've ever been scared about, I met him quite a few times, and every time, you know, we're, we're always doing, but he's got a big sign up there saying no pictures taken. Yep. And I actually kind of, I kind of asked him one time, I was like, well, why, why don't you want pictures taken? Because uh, at first I thought it was he didn't want pictures taken of his artwork, things like that, but he doesn't want pictures taken of him either. But apparently from what he told me, um, he feels like if you take a picture of him, it steals his soul. Oh, that's good. Well, he's not wrong. That's I, true. Yeah. Or remember, well, <laughs> steals his soul or steals like $20 out of his pocket. Yeah. Do you remember <laughs> uh, way back oh. in the 80s, uh, the uh, Kodak had a format called the disc, the Kodak yes. disc? Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, yeah. It was, I'm going to get you with the Kodak disc. I, I mean, come on. Do I have to draw a picture yeah, for you? Okay, all right. Stealing souls for sure. I'm sure they did. Yeah, I I do. Well, have a, I have a photo. I have a really cool photo with them. I don't know who took it. Must have been professional. We're shaking hands after I moderated his panel, and um, I guess I snuck I snuck a piece of piece of his soul from him, man. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> we also have a picture of him from uh, when that girl who was dressed up like Mary Jane. Oh right! Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. The, so, um, yeah. Did, did we ever tell you the story? We were we were at Comic Palooza in Houston, yes. 2015, I think. Yes, it was. We were coming back from dinner or something. And we saw Jim Stranko and another dude, and then this really pretty red-haired girl, like yep. super young. But we were like, "Oh my god, there's Stranko! Let's, let's go say hi to him." So I went over. And we're, we're walking over. I'm like, "Dude, I gotta ask him the question." So and <laughs> we asked the question. The about, question. Well, what was it? What was it like meeting Bob Kane? Yeah, yeah. Did you? I was like, "Dude, did you tell ever me. hear? Did you ever hear that that story?" No. Oh, all right. Well, there 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 was a story going around that Jim Stranko punched Bob Kane. Yeah, and um. Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he struck him, and and so um, you know we're talking to him like Jim. I just got to know, man. What please, happened? Please tell me. Did you really? Did you really hit Bob Kane? He was like, let me, boys, let me <laughs> tell around. Okay, let me tell you a story. And um, so I think it was San Diego Comic Con. It was, it was like one of the very early San Diego Comic Con, like 1972 or something. Yeah. So, uh, Stranko <laughs> was um, nowhere near. Um, Bob Kane's legendary status at that point. So uh, Kane's, um, yeah, Bob Kane was walking around and like with the swagger, and uh, he was like five or six inches above, um, taller than than uh, Stranko. So they, some guy introduces him and uh, condescendingly like slaps him on the face and like walks away. Yeah, I was like, hey, hey, little, hey, little, hey, little hey, man. old chum. Yeah, very disrespectful. And uh, he stewed about that all, all night. night. Couldn't sleep. Uh, couldn't sleep. Couldn't sleep. So he he gets up at like nine o'clock. Puts in the on morning, the safari jacket. Puts on the safari jacket. <laughs> walks up. Finds uh, him. Kane is is on the floor. Walks up to him and smacks him right in the face. Yeah, well, he end of the story. And he's like, and I slapped him like a little bitch. And I slapped oh, him. It was like a mic bitch. drop, and me and Mike were like, Holy "Oh my shit, god, this is god, amazing!" This is awesome. this is and awesome. he's like, "I thought I was gonna get my ass kicked, but he walked away he, like he a slunk, little bitch." He slunk away. I was like, he, "No rebuttal." Wow, no rebuttal. So, so be careful. So that was the Bob Kane meets Jim Steranko story. Yeah, yeah, it's well Actually, known. Um, if you look on Twitter, he had a whole Twitter thread oh, yeah. where he typed it out. But we heard it firsthand, man. Yeah, it was pretty. It was cool. awesome. I, I have I, something. I have something that. Uh, but one of the things. Uh, Actually, once I find it, uh, I saw a piece with with you, Mike, and it, I think you ended up with a a poster of it. But I actually have a cliche of it somewhere when I can find it. <laughs> is um, is actually it's a piece that George Perez did of all the Avengers. Yes, the thirtieth anniversary lithograph. And so what I have is it's done. It's actually a, it's not a cliche, I guess. It's all done on a. Um, like a parchment paper, like a yeah, vellum. parchment paper. Yo, you okay? So you have it already? Oh, I yeah, I bought it. Uh, well, actually, uh, is that the one on comic book? When yeah. it was episode five, I think. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, I, I I actually have one, and it's number thirty-two. Oh, nice! Wow, that's that's great. You should get um, a frame. I, you should get a frame. Well, actually, it, it, it is framed. I mean, we I have it sitting up. Uh, I I think it's sitting in storage. I just have to because I don't have anywhere to put it. Are you sure you didn't loan it to a I don't know. A no, no, no. The, 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 
the well, plucky then, cheaper uh, cover. If you already if you already have one, I'm not going to send it over to you. So never mind. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my God, Scott, you don't have to keep sending stuff to me. I'd love it though. If you ever no, see it, if you ever see a a, a glicé or however they yeah they glicé call it, or whatever yeah glicé. you know what I am looking for that. Um, that center spread from I think it's Justice League 195 or 196 with the Justice League on one side, they're in the satellite, and the Justice Society on the Society other side. On the other, yes. Somebody did make a glee, glee, key, glee, 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 if, if I can find a glicky of it, uh, glicky, I'll, I'll glicky. make sure. <laughs> Honey Galecki? Sure you can find stuff. a Galecki. Awesome. Um, have y'all had anything good coming into the shop recently? or Nothing. Uh, not really. I haven't had a lot of people coming in selling stuff, which is really, really odd. Mm -hmm. Um. You think they're just hanging on to it just for I if things get think even so. worse? No, I think that most people are still afraid to go out. Good point. Well, yeah. I mean, actually, for me, we've actually had some really good collections come through. Um, I bought a Ninja Turtles one through eight. Damn. Uh, I picked that up. Um, Wait, I sold. The, I sold the one through four first in less than printing? an hour. What? Yeah. First printing. I sold. I see. Yeah, I sold the the one through four in less than an hour. Well, uh, we, we were actually we were actually closed that day, and somebody called me up and said, "Hey, what time do you what time do you close?" I'm like, "Well, we won't be open until tomorrow at eleven o'clock." He's like, "Well," I said, "But I'm at the shop right now. I'll be here for another hour." He goes, "Well, I'm in the parking lot right now." All right, uh, just there you are. He saw, yeah, he saw the pictures on the on the uh, Facebook page and it's been in Instagram, oh. and he walked right in and bought one through four and. I said I, I I owned them for about an hour. <laughs> wow! I still have five, six, seven, and eight. If anybody I wants mean, to, <laughs> great. Oh, I that's guess, funny. But... That's funny as hell. Yeah. Wow, dude. That's awesome. Then I had somebody come in afterwards and brought me uh, Green Lantern like eighty-five through one hundred two. Wow! Nice. And uh, picked those up. And got, of course, right off the bat, the uh, the first John Stewart sold in a heartbeat. Of course. Uh, then I sold about two or three of the other ones, but we still have the other ones. But I, I, I got to say that you know lately I've been getting in some really good stuff. People have been you know wanting to unload things, so I'm I'm very very happy that you know we've been able to acquire some very good things. That's amazing. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, it's been a little slower by us. So I haven't uh, you know when I do find something, you're the first person I call. So. Oh, by all means, I mean, please do, because like I said, if you, if you can't get rid of it, I probably can, especially if it's a, a high-end issue. That's been the biggest thing lately, is most people coming in are wanting um, really high-end things. And despite all the, the COVID and the pandemic and everything else, uh, I, I've got to say, the people that have come in, uh, you know, as far as wanting to have entertainment or, or they're buying stuff that they maybe they normally wouldn't buy because they're tired of watching Netflix. And you know what, if y'all want to come in and go to the secret stash or come here to three alarm comics and you're looking for something, I guarantee it will hook you up with something that you're, that you're wanting. Awesome. Cool. So, um, and just to let y'all know, anybody else comes in, uh, Mike was kind enough to, uh, we, we kind of did a little bit of a trade. Oh, um, Mike was kind enough to send us, if, if you're interested in it, you know, with Kevin Smith doing the new Green Hornet cartoon that's coming up, uh, Mike was kind enough to send us some of the exclusives from the secret stash, which we have here. Nice. And a little bit of Red Bank and, and uh, Bloxy and, Mississippi. Absolutely. In turn, we ended up sending some of our exclusives we had here up to the secret stash so if there's something you're looking up at from mitch bird from uh jen broomall from steve scott you can actually pick them up here or it, beforehand it was only available here now it's available here and at the secret stash damn straight and now you've got uh the green hornet variants number ones yes we we have the negative variant we have the uh the j scott campbell variant which Quite honestly, thank you. That that one has done very, very well. Excellent. God bless you, Dynamite, yeah. for your many, many, many variants. Actually, we, we were, as soon as I was unpacking it, uh, that's why I had to message you. I was like, hey, uh, how much are these things? Uh, I, I, I'm pulling them out of the box, and like two or three people here is like, is that the Scott Campbell variant? 
It's like, yeah, I think so. Sure. And yeah, that's how the best is used. Like, I'll give you a hundred dollars for it. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, um, and anybody else who is a comic retailer, if you guys are wanting to get in on some of this and you want to to make some good contacts and and you're you're friendly, you 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 want to enjoy life, you want to promote the medium, please get in contact with either me or Mike and uh, or Ming, and you know we're always willing to help support the industry and help anybody else out. Hell yeah. We're, we're right Always. there with you. Anyways, if you're nice and you're not trying to dick us over, we'll <laughs> help you. We out. will help you out. As long as you don't start the conversation like last, last stream we had was, fuck DC. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hey, you know, well, you know, sometimes things have to be said. Sometimes you get heated and well, uh, well, how, things how, do you, how do you feel about Jim Lee coming out afterwards? Like, I mean, pretty much afterwards to, to kind of <laughs> dispel all of the rumors that were going along uh you know what i i love jim lee jim lee is a really great guy just one of the nicest people you'll ever meet but uh, he's he's got over he's a corporate guy he's he's got overlords and it sucks and there's stuff he's gotta say so, well, and, so say, i'm a firm believer of believe half of what you half of what you see and a third of what you hear Yes. No, well, I would have gone like, thumb right there. I would have gone a quarter, but good for you, Scott. You're you're a little more. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm I'm very diplomatic. <laughs> we see that. Well, yes. it's worked out for you. Well, guys, thank y'all for coming on, uh, and thank also you, anybody, thanks for having Jeff on. Um, anybody else that, that's come in, if you ever want to come on and join us, or if you'd like to join Ming or Mike on their I Sell Comics thanks, yep. podcast. <laughs> or any of the other podcast, many, many, many podcasts they do, please tune in. Go to uh, shareduniverse.com. Let them know. Go on there. Watch their shows. Watch their podcasts. They have a lot of great things going on. Uh, but pretty much that's about it. Everybody, thank you all for tuning in. Ming, Mike, thank you. Thank you, Scott, and thanks for listening, folks. All right. All right, we're done. <laughs>